Okay, so now we got another 30 minutes worth of uh, storage in the camera. This is the uh, sheath that I dyed earlier this morning and it's already dry. Um, we'll go ahead and take our copper rivets. If you haven't seen them before, they're just copper rivets. And we'll put three copper rivets in here. The reason I like copper rivets over stitching is because with stitching I have seen knives that when they were sheathed really fast like in a hurry or an emergency um, if your hand is not straight up and down as you go to uh, sheath that knife the point of the knife will cut through the stitching and the worst thing that can happen is if that happens you don't notice it if you notice it hey everything's great if you don't notice it then later on down the line you've done lost your entire knife and sheath and you didn't even know about it. So now we'll come over to the anvil. Zoom in a little bit for this part. Now we've got ourselves a little tool that sets the washers down on the rivets. All it is is a piece of round brass stock. It's had a hole drilled in the end of it slightly over the diameter of the shank of the rivet. So we put that over, give each one of them a nice tap. Make sure that they're seated set off to the side. I usually do this part over a trash can but I don't want to move the camera again. Just take some regular old wire cutters because copper is pretty soft. Clip off your extra. Leaving about oh an eighth of an inch or so worth of rivet sticking out. And then with the ball peen side Check with your finger to make sure you didn't leave any high spots. And now we're ready for the next step. Rivets are all peened over. Looking good, no sharp edges. Now we are going to rough fit the welt to the sheath and to the, well it's already fitted to the sheath but now we need to fit it to the knife. In this case a nice little Hunter and Bacote. We're going to need three nails. We're going to take one and put it into the second to the last hole because remember that last hole is nail sized. The second to the last hole is 3.30 seconds so it'll slip in there real nice and easy. And then the second to the last hole up at the throat. Now we're going to want to leave, this is an important part and I hope I get it to where you can see it. We're going to leave just, you know, this just should just, just be on the nail to where it's open to where you can see what we're doing in there. We're going to take the knife, place it inside the sheath, and then run it down to where it's going to sit against our welt and our guard. Now, as we look at that, down in there, we're going to kind of imagine where the point of that guard is going to travel along that welt as it comes out. Now I'm going to do it over here to where I can actually see it instead of looking through the camera. Okay, so 
the tip of that guard rests here. It needs to come over a cam in this area and then it's actually going to come out over here because we met, built a little bit of an angle uh, in the welt in relation to the path of the knife. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and trim that cam back. And I think I'm a little bit oversized. I'm pretty sure I'm a little bit oversized there, which is okay because we can always make another cut. It's a little bit more difficult to put the leather back on. So now we'll need our third nail and we're going to put it here. Because right now when we force that guard across that cam, Without that second nail, this leather will move up and it'll throw our fit off. If we fit it up like that and then we stitch it up like that, then we'll have to take a whole bunch of this cam off while the sheath is already stitched. And that's quite a bit slower of a way to do things. So we put two nails in there and that way it can't move because it won't be moving once it's all stitched up. Get that nail in. Get that nail in. Now we check our fit. It's a little on the tight side. A little too much on the tight side. A lot of sheath making and fitting is, is the difference between a little little and too much little. It's kind of all subjective really. Take just a hair off of that. And after you've made, oh, a couple of hundred of them or so, why then, you'll kind of start to get a feel as to this thickness of leather with this tight a fit translates into a good fit when the sheath is all stitched up because everything will tighten up when we put those stitches in. Now this is feeling really nice. We might have to trim just a hair off that cam. Um, after the sheath is stitched, but for right now it's just about perfect. So we'll take our nails out. And we'll grab our stitching, or our thread. I use just the regular old artificial sinew. And we count back six holes from the underside of the, the welt. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go up through the sixth hole. down through the fifth, go through your loop, pull it tight, and then just set this to the side. Now I like using barge cement, so we'll shake the barge cement up. I use barge cement a little bit differently than what I remember the instructions being on the can. I haven't read them in a long time. The instructions on the can tell you to wet both sides or both pieces of leather to be joined let them dry until tacky and then press them together. Um, the reason I don't do that is because uh, I feel like I get a better fit of the knife to the sheath if I do it this way. And since I've already got my holes pre-drilled, I want that welt to be able to move around inside the sheath a little bit as I'm stitching it to make sure that the holes are lined up. So, what we're doing here is we're going by the pencil marks that I drew on the sheath, um, you know, when we took the welt out the first time, as to where to apply the glue. And I am pretty liberal with the glue at this point, because remember, the instructions say to glue both sides of the sheath, or both pieces of leather, and I'm only gluing one, so I need enough glue on here to saturate not only this this portion of the leather but the welt also once I get it on there. Ok, 
Okay, now we go to our pencil marks. We go to the fifth hole, put the needle in the fifth hole, run the thread all the way through, kind of straighten things up, come back up through the fourth hole, line that up with our pencil mark, go through. Now we're going to stitch all the way down and then all the way back up and then we're just going to come uh, well you'll event I'll eventually go from here to here all the way back up and then all the way back down but I don't want you to sit there and watch me sew an entire sheath it's kind of boring so but I do have wet glue on here so I'm gonna go from here to the point and then back up to the top and then down a stitch and that'll it'll go pretty quick so I'm, I'm I don't know how to edit the the movies so um, It'll go pretty quick, but then I won't, uh, I won't have to remake the sheath later. Just pull each stitch nice and tight. I guess I can talk about the uh, the leather quality and the uh, the like the way I like to dye my sheaths while you're just watching me stitch up a sheath here. Um, I I hear that you can get a better quality of leather uh, from places other than Tandy. Um, but tell you the truth, we don't. I, I like buying my leather in person. I don't feel comfortable uh, buying it over the internet because I want to see it and feel it and make sure it's the right thickness and um, uh, you know that it's the right amount of leather and and you know all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just go down to Tandy and and buy it by like I said a half a cow. Now they I don't believe they plane that leather to a certain thickness, so they say 10 to 12 ounce. Um, I think it might be more like 9 to 14 ounce. I've had some sides that were, heck that leather was almost a quarter of an inch thick. And so uh, those sides were, you know, set aside for making uh, big chopper sheaths. Uh, the thinner portions are set aside for making uh, small game or uh, EDC sheaths. Uh, and then the stuff that lands in the middle or for, you know, normal size uh, hunters, rough use knives, things like that. The, uh, <clears throat> the scars that the cow got while it was still alive that are still in uh, the surface of the leather, um, tell you the truth, I like those. Um, you know, plain, 100% clean leather is, is kind of boring to me. Um, that's why I do, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't work around the scars in the cowhide. I, uh, unless somebody wants one that's, you know, super clean, that doesn't have any scars, or if somebody wants one that has mostly scars in it, or, you know, part of a brand or something like that. Um, and so usually by, I mean, if I was just buying by the square foot, uh, and somebody wanted, you know, 12 by 12 inches worth of leather and somebody wanted a very clean sheath then I would have to uh, you know go down and pick out a really nice piece or order it um, and just hope that the guy that was picking it out was uh, looking after my best interest but by buying an entire side usually there's there's spots on that hide that you can match to whatever um, 
application for a sheath that you're going to use then. And then the, uh, the pattern of the die, uh, I like having the streaks going this way on a sheath. Um, this part's kind of light in here, but they will darken up once we uh, put the wax in. Okay, now by stitching this all the way up one side, and then just down a couple of stitches on the other side, now I know that everything's going to stay in place, and when I'm done with the video, I can come back, finish this up, and nothing will have moved. So now we can fast forward a little bit. Here's a sheath that I just stitched uh, earlier this morning. So you'll have, once you get done, now your needle will be attached to this end. But what I do to keep that thread from pulling out is I just cut it off, oh, about a half inch or so. Grab a cigarette lighter. Start melting that, that thread till it's just about to burn the sheath and then wet my finger and push it down. That will uh, uh, create a ball of melted nylon uh, that won't pull through the other side of the sheath. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and do a little bit closer of a fit up. This one's fitting real nice to start with. In fact we're just going to leave it where it's at right now and then uh, uh, after it gets waxed we might tune it up. But right now we're a little bit oversized. Um, our welt isn't even with the sides of our sheath. So we're going to go true that up on the grinder. Okay, that's just a nice 36 grit belt to remove the excess leather. Now we will switch to a 220 grit belt to smooth things up. You might have noticed that belt wobbling uh, when I first fired the grinder up. The reason for that is because the last time I used that belt uh, yesterday was to wet sand the handles. And the belts never dry 100% um, straight. So when you go to fire that belt up again, it will want to wobble a little bit. Um, until it, it gets smoothed back out. So now we got the outside profile of our sheath all nice and rounded off and it's smooth and it's got sort of a, you know, a, a buffed look a little bit. Eh, slightly. But we're gonna go ahead and dye it. So back comes our dye. Grab our dauber. Okay, that's nice and dyed. Um, this dye dries really quickly. Um, 
but it's not instant. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, uh, this pot right here that's been sitting in the background uh, bubbling away merrily for the last couple of, or the last hour or so. Um, it's filled with a solution of 50-50 Neat's foot oil and beeswax from a friend of mine who uh, raises bees. This is by far the best way that I've ever found to wax sheaths. Uh, I used to use snow seal where you know, you'd warm the leather up, grab you a handful of snow seal, rub it in there real good, you know, heat it back up, let it absorb, do that three times or so. And you could get a good coat on this side, but and you could get a good coat here and on the, the edge, but you couldn't get up underneath the belt loop, and you couldn't get inside the sheath very well. So, I came up with this. Uh, I believe it's fairly similar to snow seal, uh, might be a little bit on the thicker side. But all it is is 50-50, roughly, Neat's Foot Oil and beeswax. Um, and, and that's it. I will say that most of these sheaths has, have got a weep hole in the end so that water can, can drain out if, if you uh, end up going swimming with your knife. That way water can drain out of the sheath um, you know, and, and dry out fairly quickly. When you dunk your sheath into here, do not have your hand over that weep hole. I did that the other day. I've probably done 200 sheaths in the last, well, since I started using this setup. And you could see that is what's left of a big old honking blister, that blister, and there, uh, there was some damage underneath my wedding ring. When I had my hand over the top of that like that and went too fast, it created a pocket in there and it shot that uh, oil and wax mixture up in there and coated my hand and by the time I could get it off it still blistered up. It was it was not very nice. So when you when you go to dunk these, dunk the throat in first, count to three. Uh, depends on how hot your your wax oil mixture is. If you go longer than that you can start getting separation uh, in the glue between the outside of the sheath and the welt. It won't hurt anything, but it's a cosmetic issue. Um, so go in for a, a count of two or three, and then from the throat in first, one, two, three, it's a little bit on the hot side. Now flip it quickly so that that uh, wax can run down on the inside of the sheath. One, two, because it's on the hot side. Now we can drain off the extra. Now what we're going to do is go stick it in the toaster. It's a fancy uh, shop toaster. And we're going to stick the toaster on light because that's the color that we want our sheath. That was a joke. We just we just need a little bit of heat and pretty much just a chamber for, you know, because the oil is hot. Um, we just need to add a little bit more heat so that the oil and wax that's on the surface can get absorbed all the way below the surface. And it looks like we're done. So now we will come back over. Take ourselves a rag. Kind of buff it out a little bit. And our sheath is done. So we'll set it off to the side to let it cool. And then I'll tell you about that last little bit of fitting. Now that one, once it gets cool, is probably going to fit about perfect. This is my personal hunting knife. I've carried this knife for two years now. Uh, we've been getting along really well. We've done two or three elk, probably half a dozen antelope, and at least a half a dozen deer together. Uh, n not all those were mine, you know, mine, my daughters, and my father-in-laws. Um, anyway, so uh, if when you put that knife in there, after a while, it'll. You, did you see that quick movement there? That's a click of that point of that guard going over the cam. 
if it's too hard to pull it out, what you can do is take yourself a round file that's got a pretty coarse tooth on it, and then go inside there and then trim that cam down just slightly and then test fit again and then trim it down and then test fit again it should be when it leaves the shop it should be slightly tight um, because the leather will um, break in you know loosen up stretch a little bit um, and then once it it breaks in then it should pretty much uh, retain that stiffness pretty much until you wear the leather out um, the reason I like this style of sheath, it looks like I've got three minutes left. Three minutes left, okay. The reason I like this style of sheath is because that guard sits on that, on the ledge of that welt there. So, when this style of knife is in this style of sheath, that cutting edge is just contacting the inside of the welt it's not supporting the entire blade. If you didn't have that guard there, yeah, you could build your sheaths a little bit narrower or a little bit skinnier, but your edge is, support, is what's supporting the weight of the knife inside the sheath. Um, that guard allows you to build it to where the guard supports the weight of the knife inside the sheath. And then with the you know, if your knife goes in a good inch, inch and a half into there, there's no rattle. You can shake that thing up inside, upside down all you want. If you're wearing it and you get turned upside down, your knife isn't going to come out of the, the sheath. Um, with the rivets, your blade isn't going to cut the belt, the stitching, so, because there's no stitching there. And so it will always stay attached to your belt. It's fast and easy to, to draw and to put in one-handed. Um, there's no strap to worry about having to cut or having uh, worrying about cutting it as you're sheathing the knife or as you're drawing the knife or to remember to snap uh, the, the, the strap. Um, it's just a good overall sheath. I, I really like them and I've been carrying them for a long time and, and I haven't found any better which is why if I do find something better that's what I'll make but as far as I'm concerned this is about the best way to make a sheath for a, a, a normal hunter or everyday carry knife that there is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and um, it helps you either get started making sheaths or continue making sheaths or, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, that's it for today.